Hey everyone, this is Dusko Makas Tag Gamer, and today we are playing Knight of the Sacrifice, also known as Aikini no Yoru. Now this is going to be one of the more complicated Let's Plays I've done, I need to express this here and now. This is a blind Let's Play, and this game has not been properly translated into English. That said, I have a translation from <laughs> Chelsea, the person who translated Fatal Frame 4, which was never put inside the game itself, but she is responsible for the translation for this game. I am looking through these script files as I play the game and trying to see if I can figure out what text it said when, so to sort of piece together the story. Um, it might be sort of a complicated process, but that's part of the fun of it. Uh, now, this game has fascinated me for years. I, When I learned about it back in, I think, early 2010 when Marvelous announced it, it looked like the sort of thing that was straight up my alley, so I followed it, and unfortunately it never got an English release. I held out a long time for an English release, but never happened. It released in 2011, Japanese only, for the Wii. <clears throat> I kind of hoped that someday there would be a translation, and there is a translation, just never has been put inside the game itself, so we're going to be doing the sort of convoluted way of playing this, of reading off the translation as we play. As such, expect there to be some difficulties during this and a few times I have to do some other things. I should also mention playing this game via uh, emulation at the moment, and I'm playing with a mouse. This game was developed with the Wii balance board in mind, but we're doing the Wii mode things because they have a Wii mode setting, and seeing how it goes for us. With all this said, I might not be able to translate every bit of text that pops up on the stream. In fact, I don't think I'm going to be able to translate the first few things of text, not until we actually get inside the story, because I think the only thing I have translations of is the things in the story itself, like the story cutscenes. So have that in mind as we're playing. We're going to kick straight into this, and hopefully it goes down okay. But I kind of like the theme that's playing. I like that there's also footsteps that are aligned with it. Gives it kind of a certain tranquil atmosphere. I'm also going to adjust my own audio for a second before I really kick into this. There we go. Now, this is an example of what I mean. Uh, I have text here, but I'm not exactly sure of when the text is relevant. When we actually get inside the story, it's going to be a lot easier for me to follow. And you might see this pop up. I have all these uh, text translation files and WordPad open up at the moment. I don't believe the very first few things of text I have translated here, so unfortunately I have no idea what this says. I think it's just system stuff, because you can see the word Wii there in the bottom line. I think this is just telling me, like, don't turn off my Wii when I'm playing, and all the basic information of it. It won't be until we get inside the story stuff itself that I have any idea what the game is saying. But still, though. Oh, I also mentioned this was made by Marvelous Entertainment. The people that made this game are mostly famous for making the Harvest Moon games and the Half Minute Hero games. This was actually developed in-house by them. I guess they, during the Wii era, got tired of making all those Wii Harvest Moon games and instead decided to make a horror game that they only released in Japan. So, yeah. Now I'm assuming this is the whole gay herself here, explain the basic stuff. Unfortunately, no idea. Now here's something which is also kind of interesting about this game. Something which kind of attracted me back when I knew next to nothing about it, and I still don't know a lot about it, but as we could see here, there is a selection of playable characters. Now, I don't know what their bios say or anything, but I do know their names. The characters we can rename in just a second, I think that's what we're doing right now, but what these characters have, or what they're called in Japanese, are their colors. So this is blue, this is yellow, this is pink, this is red, this is black. Now if we click them, I believe we're switching their names right now. This isn't, uh, and we can actually probably put them inside these character names so we can spot them are easier. Yeah, you're going to be called Blue. Now let's uh, call you Blue for the moment. I'm having some difficulties there. Uh, shift please. B, why will not that not get capitalized? BB, B babe. They really don't like their capitalized Bs, do they? Whatever. You are... Hmm. It's kind of a weird system there. Um, blue. So, blue is going to be called BLR below the shift key. Think we can we change it there? Oh, it worked. What an amazing thing. You you noticed something I didn't notice. So, we can use this to Okay, that makes my life easier. So, these are different types of Japanese characters. Keep in mind I don't know a lick of Japanese. We can call you blue. Okay, you're blue. You right there. Your name is gonna be 
Yellow. Oh, it can it can be yellow. It's yellow. So yellow is yellow. Just keep that in mind. Mm, yellow. Then we have pink. Here we go. Then we have everybody's favorite red. I don't know if everyone's favorite one's making this straight though. Let's choose you and your black. There we go. It's everyone's favorite game. Blue, yellow, pink, red, and black. Makes it easy to help. Also, the script has them written as their colors. Like, red is red, so this makes it very easy to follow the script. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> I think we're good. We've selected our character names. we got blue, yellow, pink, red, and black. Let's do this. Loading something. So like an options menu, and that was just me trying to name my characters early on, or just like the opening. I think this is it. Tutorial, so I'm gonna read I'm going to assume this is the tutorial that's playing right now. If it's not, I'm apologize for reading the wrong text. <laughs> so here we go. Just this is the first thing labeled, so I'm going to assume this is what it is. Tuskuyomi Valley. There are legends of there once having been sacrifices made here in this closed-off village. I think I'm actually reading this correctly. 24 hours ago, five university friends gathered at a house in this valley. Yeah, I think I'm exactly on the right spot of the script. I'm happy because you can see 24 and 5. I feel proud of myself for being able to read numbers in order. So yeah, to say that as a complete thing. Tuskomiomi Valley. There are legends of there having once been sacrifices made here in this closed off village. 24 hours ago, five university friends gathered at a house in this valley. So, accomplishment one, we're at the right point in the script, so this is, that's a good first step. <laughs> Let's do this. So I think this is just saying what I just said, it's kind of read a little bit ahead. He's playing Nintendo DS. Now I'm going to give them all voices to get ready for this. Red's going to sound like this. Let's walk around to you there until yellow arrives. You're as much of an idiot as ever. Well, whatever. Red is just being a big old douche playing on his Nintendo DS to good old black here. So Red's kind of a douche, we got that in mind. I mean, he was wearing a trail laser and has a little scruffy hair, so you can tell from their simple character designs the sort of roles they're supposed to fulfill. Okay, and we're already kind of in the game, and the controls actually seem fine right now. Like, I think I already had them perfected, so this is, this is actually pretty simple. So let's talk to Pink, because the script tells me I need to talk to Pink, so there you go. Or maybe I can't talk to her. Can I talk to other people? Can I click anything? Can I, can I, I can talk to him again. Hmm. Maybe there's another way which I move. Maybe, maybe, let's see. Is there something which I don't know? To, maybe my controls aren't perfect right now. Maybe I'm supposed to be able to move by tilting things. Let me try something. This is me science. Okay, yep, I figured it out. So I can actually walk and move around. This is how I can quick turn. That's very helpful. So yeah, okay, this control scheme will still work for me. Basically, um, this isn't like me playing Wii Balance Board. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to strafe like this. And if I need to strafe, I'm kind of boned. But at the moment, this seems, as long as the game doesn't have me strafing, this seems fine. Uh, how I'm working this through emulation, I don't know what my settings currently are set to, but I kind of just face a direction, I right click, and I take a step forward. A uh, left click is interact, and middle mouse button turns me around like that. That's whatever I had set my settings to, so I can work with this. This is workable. Let's talk to you, Pink. Ah, first of all, there's a clock over there, but nope. Let's talk, Pink. Hi. Now she's going to have this voice. Having a new house up in the mountains like this feels kind of weird, doesn't it? Don't stare like that. It's embarrassing. That is exactly what she says, apparently. Um, it's a little bit weird. Are we all living in a house together? Having, I, I, don't, I think they're either... Are they traveling? Do, do they all live together? Are they like roommate, flatmates? Are we all living together? And also, who am I playing as? I assume I'm... What, maybe I'm Blue. Blue did kind of seem like the main character, didn't he? But anyways, though, so pink's all, don't stare, it's embarrassing, blah, blah, blah. Let's go talk to Black over there. Black, I'm coming your way. Just, I'm gonna, if I, 
This is good to know. I can hear me click clacking this whole entire time with this. So I can kind of run faster by doing it like this, like a madman. Hi, Black. Let's talk. This looks like the house my dad went off and built for some reason. It's the first time this, this looks like the house. You mean it is the house that your dad built off? Because you're not going to say. It's the first time I've been here. I didn't even know about it until recently. Seeing the inside of my dad feels weird somehow. So, I guess his dad built this, and he feels kind of weird, because this is like a house that he built that we all just moved into, and maybe his dad, maybe his dad is dead, which is why it feels weird that he sees part of his uh, dad there. Also, notice how they have a Wii console at their goddamn television. I see what they're doing. I see your ploy. I also need to remember I can turn around faster like this. Can I walk over here? Let's find out. This door could be opened. Blue. Oh, he says something. I don't think I actually have a translation for this line. That's unfortunate. But it doesn't confirm I'm playing this blue. He's probably just saying I can't enter in here or something, though. I think the only lines I have translated is the main storyline. So basically, don't expect this to be a full translation, but we are going to get the general gist of the storyline. Anyways, I'm pretty sure this is the door that we have to leave through, so let's do it. No, Blue is not very happy about this. Maybe I should talk to people more. Like, I haven't talked to Red again. I think he's just saying, okay, I think actually I read this uh, Lil Ron. What I did is that I read both of the lines of dialogue they say. I think I said I need to talk to both of them uh, more than once. Like, the first time I talked to him, he said, let's walk around here until Yellow arrives, is what Red said originally. But now he's saying, you're as much of an idiot as ever. Well, whatever. So that's what he's saying right now, but I read them both earlier. And now uh, saying that how to move in the game, B button, what it all does, Wii Remote Fun. Okay, so I think I'm figuring it out as I go. Hi, Black. He's saying the same thing that he said earlier because he only has one line exchange. And earlier I read Pink is saying having a new house up in here, if in the mountains like this, feels kind of weird, doesn't it? But now when I talk to her is when she says the line, don't stare at me like that, it's embarrassing. Don't stare at me like that, it's embarrassing. There you go, and I've talked to all of them. And that's all the dialogue I get. I think he wants to say he should talk to everybody first. Yep, that was exactly it. 24 hours later, the five unexpectedly vanished. What kind of disaster befell them? You visit the valley 24 hours after the incident. So there you go. We've actually finished up the first chapter of this game, which is the first script right out of the way. So I'm just kind of close to tutorial because we're going to go on to the next script. Eh, let's move through. They've gone missing, apparently all five of them, which would be blue, red, pink, yellow, and black all went missing. We were all waiting for yellow, but yellow didn't show up yet. But it uh, looked like blue, pink, red, and black all arrived at their mountain house nicely. So, all of them went missing. This is uh, the long version of what I literally just said. Unfortunately, since Japanese characters and English characters don't exactly always jive together. Anyways, this is later one. Abandoned house in the rain. Or, no, it takes me to the main menu. Oh boy, that's kind of odd. Now, I'm kind of curious what both these options do. I'm going to try the bomb one, which might quit me out of this, but I'm hoping not. What? I don't kind of want to click these because are these like screenshots that someone took? This might be because I have a save file. This is like pictures? Maybe I should stop clicking around this. It's like looking through my Wii memory. This is the brightness adjustment. Let's see. I don't know what I'm doing. Is it checking to see if I have an online connection? Is this like, oh wait, actually I think I get it. Is this like uploading my screenshots to my Wii thing? Because remember back when people had that thing where you could send screenshots here? So I think these are just pictures from the save file. I'm gonna stop clicking buttons, I'm gonna click this now. Now this is the same instructions that we just read. The whole thing about the Wii. Why am I renaming them again? Did I do something wrong? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Click you this time instead of the first thing. 
There are like six scenes, and most. Yeah, you know what? I think it is this. You wanna know why? Because there's five of them, and I have five things called later. So let's see what happens here. This one should be later one. Abandoned house in the rain. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, description. On a rainy night, you are lured towards the valley's cursed abandoned house. So that's apparently what this says. This uh, is called Later One, and it's Abandoned House in the Rain. On a rainy night, you are lured towards the valley's cursed abandoned house. That's what I'm getting out of it. I must have scrolled the text so I can read it when it comes up here in a second. I think we're going to start figuring this out. Lost in a secluded valley, you were suddenly caught in a fierce thunderstorm. Fortunately, you found a house in which to take shelter from the rain, and hurried inside. Yeah, I think this is exactly it. Oh boy. And this is actually me controlling the flashlight, in case you're curious. I can turn around and check it out this door. Wait, that's how I turned off my light for some reason. The rain is lashing down. It's probably better not to go out there. So our character claims. Eh. So, let's move forward. Try and get things up there. So I turn my flashlight just on and off. When I'm not looking at something, yeah, I just click on something. And when it shows an icon, I can do it like something like that. So, let's move forward. Even though notably the house in the rain has blood just straight up already on it, I would not have entered this house. I would have been like, oh, it's raining. Better find a place to go and take shelter from it. And then I open up this door. I see a trail of blood. And I'm like, <laughs> nope. This door open. Nah, it's locked. This door won't open. So you know what else we have to do? We have to follow this suspicious trail of blood. Somebody's knock knock knocking on that door. Peekaboo. Anything up the stairs? Not yet. Sure, we'll follow the trail of blood suspiciously first. I'm sure this is a good idea. Something even destroyed the walls over here. Oh, I got wait. What's my minus button? I need to remember. You want to stop? <laughs> okay, so we're going to stop one more time. I forgot something. I forgot what I set the plus and minus button to. Now we go inside a rainy cabin because it's like, oh no, it's raining. Oh wait, there's a house here. Well, that's okay. I'll go inside this house and follow this trail of blood that's just right here because that's normal. Well, there we be. Let me turn away, right? I need to remember I can do this just to turn myself around. That is unfortunate. It is locked. That's me turning off my flashlight, because I'm great. I don't think there's a flashlight battery, so I very much hope there isn't one. People are shaking everything, so time for me to receive a text message. We answered it this time. So here's what the text message says. ISO 202 JP. This is stuff at the very top. Eight, uh, this is from August 16th at 11.35 p.m. And it says, cut up more, more, plop, 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 more sacrifices, more. That's literally what it says. Normal. This is exactly the sort of text message I wanted to see when I was following a bloody trail inside a house I've never been into in the rain, dark, stormy mountain valley. So... Yeah, yeah. Hello, anybody home? There are hands coming out of the wall, and we didn't even say anything to it. We were just like, oh, well, I didn't see anything. It must have been the wind. I'm gonna run over this way. Take a solid look right at this phone, which I can't do. The phone isn't giving me anything. I guess it's because I got my cool new phone, which apparently I can just put away whenever I want. Phone, not phone. Phone, not phone. There you go. The blood trail leads into here. Peekaboo. It's only a bloody pathway. Don't question these things. What a fine painting. At least somebody in this rustic old place appreciates good art. Around the corner. Nothing. That was a little spooky. I'll give it to you. I wasn't really. And that was. I should have seen that coming. But at that time, it didn't get me. Why open and close the door for me? What a rude ghost or whatever it is that's inside this game. 
This place is completely destroyed. I would have chanced the rain. You guys are all correct with that. Can I open this? I can open it. Leads to a goddamn bloody ass toilet. Apparently, someone really had the bloody shits and giggles. Let's, uh. Ooh. There? Huh. Damn it. And I'm not sure this is what this character is saying, but I'm gonna find out. That's a big hole in the ceiling, is what he just said when he was examining this. And you know, it's also just dripping blood into the toilet, which I guess the toilet just walked over here. So this is a bad toilet. Walking all around this house, leaving a messy trail everywhere. This is why walkable toilets is not going to ever become a thing in our future. Imagine if toilets had consciousness. Hi. Bye. There is also a doll here. Hi, doll. Doll's very happy to see me. Apparently she was just waiting her turn to use the toilet. Can't blame her. Uh, just going to warn her it's a little clogged up right now. Let's open up this door. Well, it's a room, all right. Hmm. Oh. oh! Why have a chainsaw? This is a bit alarming. I never trust people <laughs> that just fall over in messes with chainsaws on the ground. No, seriously, why is this person carrying a huge ass chainsaw? Why are they just on the ground? Let's examine. Damn. I don't know what voice to give this person. Damn it. Can the curse not be stopped after all? The sea rejected her. Why? What was missing? I don't know who you are, but you'd better get out of here now. So they're giving us a big old warning saying, hey, ignore the fact I'm carrying a chainsaw. The, this is bad. There's big deals going on. Something about the sea. Get out of here, you fucking idiot. Alright. Well, that's fine. Even though I'm more concerned about you, crazy person with a chainsaw. Walk over here. There is a ghost over there. I don't think it's normal for ghosts just to be loitering in the hallway, so... Apparently I can still pass through part of a sofa, but regardless. Wait, there, there's another ghost. Hi, ghosty. What are you doing hiding behind the shell? Oh, you're just a little early to, if you wanted to crush me with that, but sure. Hey, this ghost really likes its doll collections. That doll head is fidgeting ever so slightly. That's not very kind of you. Well, I'm passing. Did I just see something over there? I'm just crazy. They're probably not, because, you know, things. The ghosts are very non subtle. I assume, yep, run. So there are malicious ghosts, and you are a malicious ghost. So let me avoid that. I'm gonna open up this door. Hopefully it's safe in here with all these ghost hands. How are you doing, ghost hands? They're doing fine. Let's open up this store. Hi. I got a text message. Run. Get out of here. Run. Sister is in the bath. Or I think it says sister is in the bath. Even though the characters are cut out. But it's like sister is in the booth. There aren't enough sacrifices for her. The characters I should mention with all this are all very disjointed and... Not very clear if this is all that they're saying here. I'm kind of curious what you guys think of this game so far. It seems like the sort of game which I was expecting, which is to say it's one of those casual horror games where you sort of walk around, there's easy chasers, and there's sort of a story that slowly develops. You can actually interact with very little in the environment, which is okay with me because that means there's less script to read. Mm hmm. But so far, it seems like there's some sort of curse involving the sea. That's what it seems like so far. To see if that ends up being any true, or there's any truth to that or not, but yeah. So, someone really doesn't like me checking their phone records. I'm going to ignore... 
kind of mess going on in there. Let's enter inside here. There's somebody that's sobbing in this bathroom. This probably isn't going to turn out very good. I think I also just got locked in here. Think they're around the corner? Think they're inside this bathtub? I'm pretty sure they're inside this bloody ass bathtub. Let's take a good look inside. Is that something? I can't tell. I can just kind of step right inside the bathtub. I think we're fine. You think it's going to be when I turn around? I bet it's going to be when I turn around. We're just going to do a quick turn and... Oh. Actually, no, it's fine. Can I investigate? Oh, I can turn off my lights, because that's a genius idea. Guess I go back out though. Never mind. There's somebody here. Hi! Please, stop. I'm sorry, but there's nothing more I can do. And this is just, we don't know who this is, somebody with question marks. But there's nothing more I can do. Plea, before I lose myself completely, please, hurry, get out of here. So it sounds like somebody's losing themselves, and they're telling us to get out of here before they lose themselves completely. Now there's nobody here. I'm gonna open up this door. The door is locked. Now it's gonna be behind me? Well... Some sort of a ghost was in here. I'm gonna turn around. Oh, now there's somebody in the bathtub. Kind of skinny! You should get some meat on your ghostly plasmatic bones. Hi. And the screen fades out. What you saw while lost in the abandoned house. It was connected to the tragedy that occurred 24 hours earlier. That was the beginning of the endless night. That was the beginning of the endless night. Now, there is something which just came up right now which I wasn't expecting. So I'm going to click this, and it's going to bring us back to the menu, because we finished that chapter. We can move on to the next. Just on the bright side, this is actually easier to follow than I was expecting. I was kind of expecting a lot harder time, but so far this is pretty simple to follow. Yeah, I think we could do this. I, I think, and the control seems simple enough that it looks like we're going to be able to actually just complete and go through this whole entire game today and translate the script as we go. So that's good. Thanks for watching the video. I'd very much appreciate if you take a moment to consider donating to my Patreon, which I am using to try and make this more of a livelihood, not just for missed game videos, but little games to make my own time, and to bring different types of videos to the channel. You can find the link for my Patreon in the description below, or in the video, obviously. If you'd be interested in seeing me recording gameplay videos and doing other things live, I stream quite regularly and record almost all my gameplay over a site called Hitbox TV on my channel. You can also see that in the video currently. Hope you enjoyed the video, and adieu.